Good evening. It's only two weeks since I arrived in Gibraltar to be sworn in as the Governor and Commander-in-Chief. The reception that Liz and I have received has been extraordinarily welcoming. Like many Royal Marines, I visited, or to be strictly accurate, passed through Gibraltar on a number of occasions in my 37 years in uniform. But I've never really stayed for long enough to get to know it. In the weeks before I arrived, I met and conversed with the six most recent governors. All different characters from different backgrounds, but with one thing in common. They all fell in love with Gibraltar and its people, and all still have many local connections. Uh, I already know that it's going to be the same for Liz and I, and we're both hugely looking forward to it. It is an extraordinary privilege for anyone to be appointed as Governor and Commander-in-Chief, but especially for a Royal Marine. Our existences have often coincided over time and many events have been shared. And the timing could not be better. Next year is the 350th anniversary of the formation in 1664 of the Admiral's Regiment that later became the Royal Marines, and the 310th anniversary of the capture of Gibraltar by British and Dutch Marines in 1704. Gibraltar is the only battle honour that we wear on our colours and crest. It's on the cap badge of every Marine. Uh, that very special and enduring relationship is hugely important to the Royal Marines, and I believe, to Gibraltar and her people. Um, it's been a difficult year with the number, the scale and the character of incursions into British Gibraltar territorial waters significantly up and the delays to cross the border unacceptably long, indeed amounting to harassment. A situation made worse by the illogicality and random nature of their imposition. Situations that simply should not exist between two friendly nations that belong to the same political and economic organisation, the European Union, and to the same military organisation, NATO. The sovereignty case is rock solid, indisputable, non-negotiable, and applies just as strongly to the territorial waters. Britain and Gibraltar are in lockstep on this. I don't think there's ever been a period when the support of the British government has been stronger, or so openly expressed. Uh, National Day was, in the words of the Chief Minister, one of the most successful ever, including the video message from Prime Minister David Cameron. It is, of course, those at the operational end of the spectrum who have to deal with the reality of the border issues and the territorial water incursions. And in line with my predecessors over the years, I would like to remember and pay particular tribute to those from all the uniformed organisations who are defending our sovereignty out on the water and doing an outstanding job in mitigating to the extent possible the issues on the border and of course to the many more who are supporting them from behind the scenes. This year the RGR has been as busy as ever. Lieutenant Colonel Ivor Lopez assumed command from Lieutenant Colonel Colin Risso in September. Uh, ten soldiers from the regiment deployed to Afghanistan. And I want to make special mention of Lance Corporal Liam Downs who was awarded a mention in dispatches for gallantry. I was fortunate enough to visit the regiment on Exercise Jebel Sahara a few weeks ago, accompanying my predecessor on his last visit to the regiment on exercise. This is an excellent training event, which in many ways represents the sort of international engagement that the rest of the British Army now aspires to. I must also make mention that Gibraltar was awarded the largest number of state honours in the overseas territories and four people have received the Merchant Navy Medal, the first time it has been awarded outside the UK. 
And it's also been my privilege to inform the three recipients of the Gibraltar Award just this week. All this is testament to the enormous amount of charitable and civil society work that goes on here, often unremarked and unrewarded, and one of the best indicators of a highly developed and caring society. It's been an equally busy year in the sporting and cultural arenas. Gibraltar has joined UEFA and played its first home game albeit using a Portuguese stadium pending the construction of one here. We were also very successful in the NatWest Island Games, winning 16 medals. Culturally, there has been the Literary Festival, the International Jazz Festival, Drama, Chess, Art Festivals and much, much more. The Convent Christmas Fair, which regrettably we didn't arrive in time for, was again a huge success. Many thanks to all those who made it such a great event. And Liz and I are very much looking forward to continuing Adrian and Susie's policy of opening up the convent to as many events as possible. When we arrived here, only two weeks ago, I was delighted with a to be able to convey a message from Her Majesty the Queen, who, Majesty Majesty the Queen, her who expressed her support Gibraltar, for the people of Gibraltar, as well as her continuing best wishes. <coughs> None of us have ever been in any doubt about that support. But after what has been a particularly difficult year, I think it gives us all strength to know uh, that Her Majesty is following the events on her rock. The Christmas season is the time for families. Inevitably, there will be some who need to work to allow the rest of us to enjoy a peaceful and safe holiday. I pay tribute to all of them and thank them. Liz and I are staying here over Christmas to be joined on Boxing Day by our son and his girlfriend. Unfortunately, our daughter and son-in-law cannot join us as his job as a gamekeeper keeps him very busy at this time of year. So they will not visit the rock until March when we can celebrate our grandson's first birthday with them. Wherever you are, uh, Liz and I wish you all the very best for the Christmas season and for 2014. <laughs>